How's it going everyone, Zero Kimchi here, your source for related news and more. It's been a while since my last video, right? I'm sure you all heard the terrible news a couple of weeks ago. That and Bruno's announcement of pausing the Winlater project just broke me. I had decided to take a break too and gather all the energy I need for the coming changes to the Winlater projects. I'm not gonna talk about the controversy. I think enough has been said and it is unnecessary to further muddy the waters. Fortunately, Bruno has recently reversed his statement of pausing the Winlater project, so that's a relief. In this video, I will show you what's been happening in the past few weeks with the Winlater forks. During the past few weeks, after the Winlater virus controversy, I took the time to learn how mice wine works. So if you are here for the mice wine guide, click on the timestamp below. Let's get started. First, we got Ajay with his Ajay prefix mod, now updated to final version 10.18, with huge additions and improvements to make the experience installing this mod smoother. Along with a quality of life suggestion I made a while ago, it would be nice to have a good looking installer, although I envisioned it differently with options. I guess I failed to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is still cool and a step in the right direction. Also, if you are new to this, Ajay's prefix mod changes the default location of the game saves from the container to the device's local storage, the D drive, so that you won't have to lose them after uninstalling a container or the application. Also, is the option to install Ajay's collection of dependencies and fixes. Pretty neat stuff. If you need this, the link is in the description below. Next up, let's take a look at Mr. Frianix Frosty's Fork Winlater 10 Final Version 2. This update contains several additions and updates to modules such as localization, update to the about dialog, update to box64 to a nightly version of the 0.3.5 version replaced DXVK 2.6.1 with a newer one, some changes in the prefix, and a fix to a bug that prevents the DXVK FPS limiter from working. If any of this interests you, I've dropped the link in the description below. Afe mod, the Winlater fork prodigy, which everyone else is based off of, had several releases over the past three weeks. For his Winlater 10 fork, a mod 5 fix, this is roughly translated from Chinese but I believe he fixed something on Turnip for Snapdragon devices below 8 Elite. Various quality of life additions and special modifications, whatever that means. Next update on his A mod 5 fix, Zinc was updated to 22.2.0, added screen rotation. From what I understand, a fix to something related to needing the correct resolution to fix missing game characters. A fix to widescreen issues in games. And some other modifications which are the same as the previous version of the fork. And then we got the latest update which adds a dot. Not much to go on with, right? <laughs> if all of this sounds good to you and you're willing to give it a go, I've dropped the link in the description below. Let's now check out Winlater CMod with Bionic, compiled by Succubus, based on Coffin Color CMod, but also coded by Peace Blaster. <laughs> a lot of changes and fixes the fork has gone through. If you collapse the old changelog, it almost seems endless. But let's just focus on the most recent changes. The most notable ones added 64 bit X Audio DLLs, added 32 bit X Audio Win Component, upgraded Windows Media Decoder to Windows Media Foundation, fixed incorrect Media Foundation Wine Registry Keys, fixed incorrect handling of Media Foundation Registry Keys. Restored 64-bit Wine G Streamer usage on 32-bit systems. These involve audio and video compatibility, which is always nice to fix. However, it is worth noting that Media Foundation is just a partial fix, especially concerning G Streamer, a set of libraries that handles videos in some games. Next, added an option to set between Box64 and FexCore emulators in Bionic containers. 
remove the HODLL variables that were being used previously to switch between Box64 and FexCore. And finally, FexCore was updated. Since I main WinLater C mod, let's have a look at how to deal with the new emulators. As you can see here, I've got a Bionic and two glibc containers set up. Let's have a look at Bionic's container settings. When you scroll down, there will be a new entry called Emulator, in which you can choose between FexCore and Box64. You can also find this in the settings of your game's shortcuts, which is a nice quality of life addition. So, to avoid confusion here, this is the way this works. The default emulator is FexCore. That means your 64-bit games will run through FexCore emulator and thus will use the FexCore settings to whatever you've set it at. However, FexCore also runs 32-bit games, but you can change this to use Box64 instead, which will then use the Box64 presets. So this emulator option only defines which emulator to use for 32-bit games. Finally, you can now also change which libraries to use for X-Audio and Windows Media Foundation within the Win Components list. Built-in means that it will use the libraries packed with the application. Native means it will use the libraries of the system. Now, I got bad news, good news and something cool to show off. The good news is, Peace Blaster has started to recompile WinLater and its libraries for Bionic. This is a big effort done so that we can move on to Bionic only, but also because a lot of libraries compiled by Coffin Colors were unfortunately broken. This will also allow Peace Blaster to change the package name to something else, so that users can install different forks of WinLater. However, the bad news is, we won't be getting any new updates till June. And Peace Blaster expressed that the next update will likely have a lot of regressions because of how complex the process is. Such as GStreamer requiring more than 10k files to be recompiled manually. So the next update will mark glibc as officially dead and will have been completely moved to Bionic. Now check out this clip. Sorry for the quality, it was taken out directly from Discord. In this clip we see a game peaking at 60 fps. Around here we see Peace Blaster doing something which limits the fps to 30. This is the real time fps limiter Peace Blaster has been developing. Neat huh? And that's it for WinLayer. Let's now give some love to Micewine, developed by Pablo. So here's the Micewine guide. What you need? The latest nightly from MiceWine's GitHub repository. Do not download the release, that one is broken. The latest rootfs rat file. The latest or any turnip you prefer and Qualcomm proprietary drivers. For the drivers you can get the ones from my Adrenatools repository, they are compatible. For the other things I drop the link in the description. Once you've downloaded all the packages, let's install MiceWine. After that's done, you'll be greeted with a setup screen. Allow it to access all your personal information and information of your friends, families, co-workers. <laughs> Go back and continue. Now, select the rootfs rat file you downloaded earlier. It will start extracting, installing modules, wine and create a wine prefix. Once that's done, the first thing you may want to do is install the drivers. So all you gotta do is tap on the file manager and browse to the directory and tap on the driver and confirm to install. Let's go ahead and check out the settings. The debug settings contains options for the purpose of debugging. Just leave everything default, except if you would like to disable this white hardware HUD, then disable debug info and the RAM counter. In sound settings, you can change the audio sync. So far, I have not needed to touch this. In driver settings, you will find some useful options here, such as the DXVK HUD. Just like on Wii later, if you'd like to use this, tap on it and select the options you would like to see. Then there's the turnip debug, which usually we don't touch. Finally, the OpenGL version. 
if for some reason you'd like to check the specifications of the turnip driver. In environment settings you can add variables when needed. Let's go back to the main menu. In controller mapper you can import a controller profile and create a new one to map any connected or built-in controller. In Virtual Controller Mapper, you can create and import touch overlay profiles. Once you create or edit one, a grid screen will open up. A bit confusing at first, but all you need to do is swipe a side on your screen to open up the context menu. And then you can work from there. The Box64 Preset Manager allows you to create, edit, import, export Box64 presets. All the necessary variables are present. Ignore Wine Prefix Manager for now, there's no use for it yet. In the RAT Package Manager, you can download and set as default the modules used here. Currently, you can only set the defaults for drivers and Box64. In Red Package Downloader, you can download more modules, like Box64 version 0.3.4. I recommend downloading it right now. Also, DXVK 2.6.1 and VKD 3D 2.14.1. Going back, in Test Controller, you can do exactly that. Test your controller. Now, running games on MiceWine is quite more convenient than on WinLater. You don't need to boot into a container at all. All you gotta do is browse to your game through the built-in file manager. If you have a SD card slotted into your device and it doesn't show up here, shut down the app and open it back up. Now, navigate to your game. Tapping on its executable will open a menu with some options. There is a launch arguments box which you can use just like on WinLater. For example, adding DX11 for games that are on DirectX 12 by default, but support DirectX 11. Display mode allows you to choose a preferred aspect ratio. Resolution, driver selection, DXVK selection, VKD 3D, some wine settings, most notably, enable Wine Virtual Desktop. This will make the app boot into the container before booting the game. Sometimes this is necessary to fix crashes. Then there is CPU Affinity. Under controller settings, you can choose a controller on and whether you'd like to use the X input of the gamepad or the virtual controller profile with X input. Finally, under Others, Box64 Selection and the Box64 Profile or Presets. Setting these from here and then tapping on Confirm will go ahead and boot the game. However, you can also create a shortcut of the game that will appear on the main screen by holding down the executable of the game and tapping Create Shortcut on Home. And go back to the home screen. When holding down the shortcut, a context menu shows up. You can choose to create a shortcut to the Android launcher. I can show you this because it does not work on this device's launcher. You can edit the shortcut and like previously, adjust all the settings to your liking. When all that is done, you can tap on the shortcut and it will boot straight into the game or the container depending on whether you got the option enabled. Once booted, you can swipe the edge of the screen to open a context menu with several options. You can open the keyboard, stretch the display, enable Mango Hot, limit the FPS, open the log viewer and export the log which will appear in the main storage slash MiceWine folder. You can enable or disable the touch overlay, edit the touch overlay mapping and edit the external or built-in controller mapping. You may need to install dependencies, but most of them are included already and so far I have not needed to install any. And that's it for the basic guide on MiceWine. MiceWine seems to improve steadily and so far it absolutely wins the user friendliness. Props to the developer Pablo. 
I'll definitely be watching this career with great interest. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful. Feel free to discuss anything we talked about in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.